Hi guys! In the last video, we covered the registration process for SIP extensions. Today, our topic is SIP call flow. I hope this video will give you a better understanding of SIP calls. With that said, let's get started. Now, have a look at a typical SIP call. We will consider a scenario with a SIP server involved. Suppose a user called Alice dials another user called Bob. The following will happen. Alice doesn't know the IP address of Bob, but she knows the IP address of the SIP server. So Alice will compose an invest request and send it to the SIP server. The two header of the request contains the SIP URI, and the body of the invite request carries an SDP message providing the parameters the call party will need to send its RTP stream to the caller. The SIP server immediately responds with 100 trying and then forwards the invite request to the target telephone. The SIP server adds one wire header to the message. As mentioned before, the SIP server has access to the local database and thus knows the IP addresses of all registered telephones. Then Bob starts ringing and sends the response 180 ringing to the SIP server. SIP server will forward the response back to Alice. Next, Bob picks up the phone and his telephone sends the response 200 OK. The body of the response contains an SDP message, so that Alice knows where to send her RTP stream. The SIP server forwards the response to Alice. Alice confirms the receipt of 200 OK with the ACK message. The SIP server forwards the ACK to Bob. At this point, the call has been established and both parties start sending their RTP streams. When one of the users hands up, his or her telephone sends the request by to the other party, and the other party responds to the by request with 200 OK. Both parties stop sending RTP data and the call is over. The completed call from the first invite to the last 200 OK is known as a dialogue. Next, we will explain the meanings of some important fields in the SIP headers to help you analyze PCAP file more easily. The via headers are used to record the roots of the request. Each proxy server on the path of the message will add one via entry. Thanks to this, the replies can be routed back along the same path. From, this field contains the address of the caller with an optional display name and with optional text. From is a mandatory field in all SIP requests and responses. In SIP responses, from is always a copy of the from field in the related request message. 2. This field contains the address of the called party. 2 is a mandatory field. The two fields in responses are copied from the related request messages. Contact. These headers provide a URI that used to contact the specific instance of the user agent for subsequent requests. For example, the contact header in 200OK with SDP will be used by the caller party to send the ACK request, and this will impact the SIP call establishment. Call ID. This is a unique identifier of the giving SIP session. It usually consists of a random stream and the IP address of the sender. Then we move to SDP parameters. ESR PBX and IP phone use SIP to establish calls, and use SDP to negotiate the parameters of media stream. So it is also necessary to understand some SDP parameters. Here are some related parameters in SDP media descriptions. The media is either audio or video. If the call contains both audio and video, there will be two M lines. The part should always be even. The even part is used by RTP and the next odd part by RTCP. The transport is usually RTP slash AVP and all the coders appears in the format list part and their order denotes the codec preference of the given user agent. And the C line means connection information. It declares network type, address type, and connection address. When we combine these two lines together, we can see that the part in M line and the IP address in C line is used to tell other peer where to send the RTP stream. SIP is an application layer protocol. That means what lists in the headers and SDP might not match the actual IP packet. The following examples may help you understand how the IP address in SIP message impact the call establishment and voice transmission. First scenario is PBX makes a call to extensions which register from outside network. When SIP invite message sends out to outside network, the source IP address change but the IP address in the headers and SDP remain the same. For this invite message, it is like PBS telling another side that please send me the audio to a private network IP address with RTP port number, 
and send me the next request to the same IP address with zip port number. So the problem comes, there is no route for the device from outside network to send a voice to a private IP address. The solution for this one-way audio problem is to set NAT in the PBX and invite or use public IP address in SDP. Scenario 2 is PBX receive a call from extension which registered from outside network. The contact header use private IP address when sent 200 OK to an IP phone. It may cause the call hang up issue after around 30 seconds. When you analyze the PCAP file with Wireshark, you will see the call flow like below. Because there is a private IP address in the contact header, so IP phone will send the ACK message to there instead of public address of PBX. The solution is the same to send NAT so that 200OK contact header will use public IP address. In extension settings, we can turn on NAT and SRTP. When endpoint device is behind a router or firework, PBX will send media stream back to where it received the stream from other peer. Turn on NAT may help to solve one-way audio problem. And SRTP should be enabled on both IP phone and PBX, otherwise it will cause call establishment issue. Talking about NAT type, now Yearstar P-Series only support two types, public IP address and external host. This requires a fixed public IP address or a domain for devices. The NAT settings will impact the IP address in the SIP header and SDP, which simply means PBX will use this public IP address when that signation is not in the range of local network identification. For outgoing calls, PBX will change the IP address in the contact header and SDP in invite SIP request. For incoming calls, PBX will change the IP address in the contact header and SDP in 200 OK SIP response. Alright guys, this is what we have in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, get more detail about troubleshooting, check out our knowledge base, get more information about system configuration, please visit our document center. I'll see you guys in the next one.